So TMC 2020, um, Emma Spare Room Machine Shop, and loads of the other guys and girls down in uh, down in the Southern Hemisphere are in it. Uh, there's a few others from Europe, America. I mean, it's a, it's people from all over the world are having a go at it. So I thought, well, I just I'll throw a little entry in just for uh, a bit of fun and to take part, basically. Um, so enjoy, guys. So what am I going to make? Well, my idea is to make some yes, sort of milling machine vice grade angle blocks, angle gauges. I haven't got the means, I've got this old one, I haven't got the means to heat treat it, um, but for what I'm using it for, as long as I treat them with respect, old one in its soft state should be absolutely fine. Um, yeah, rusty old piece of three mil gauge plate. Um, but as it happened, I had a narrower piece, another piece here of gauge plate, old one. So just using a protractor, I've marked out a 30 degree one, a 22 and a half, a 45 and a 15. And I think that covers all the sort of standard angles that I'm going to need. Obviously 90 degrees, we've got squares, we've got all sorts of means for doing that. But these are the odd balls in between. Um, yeah, okay, so a 30 is going to be 30 by 60, that idea. Um, you know, so you've got different angles. Okay, I've marked them out on here. I'm going to cut them up with a hacksaw. And the idea being to show, one, two, three, four I'll try and come up with four, four different methods of machining them to a fairly precise angle. So there we are, four pieces of metal cut out to say they're rough, they're not even rough, they're just hacksawed off somewhere between the two lines that I drew. Changed my mind slightly on the 45 degree one, got a piece of 6 mil gauge plate for that. And it's going to be more of a rectangular gauge with this corner cut off at 45. So I'm leaving that square for the time being so that I can square up the whole block. So a good opportunity to try one of those blue nano cutters out. Well, if I put a cut on. First impressions. Yeah, seems all right. Okay, uh, transfer method. Um, rough and ready. Find something that's known to be 45 degrees. Transfer it onto the part and machine the part. So I've got my squared up block, I have got a B block here, which is 45 degrees on both sides. I've got a couple of parallels in the vice of an appropriate height. So if I hold the B block tight against part, uh, the vice, hold the part tight into the B block, I should be able to just do up the vice, says he. There we are. I'm just going to loosen that off again, one second, just to make sure. Okay. So, theoretically now, if I machine the top of that off, it'll be at 45 degrees to the parallel or straight planes. A bit of oil, point one final cut. Nice and slowly. Jobs are good. So to deburr it, um, I've got an oil stone I use for deburring. You can see it's got a, a groove right through it. Um, I don't want to put a file on the edge of there. So I just put a tiny radius on the corners using an oil stone. Holding it at 45 degrees. Okay. And that's the first method of 
machining an angle. This is now going to be an angle setting block. I'll keep this in the box whenever I want anything at 45 degrees in the vise. I can put this against the jaw, put the part up against it, and we've got 45 degrees. So this method, yeah, uh, it could be half a degree out. Uh, it's got to be pretty close. So just to prepare the odd shape pieces that I've got, the triangles we'll call them. I'm taking the, what will be the 90 degree edge, and just machining that flat. So I've got a reference point, and I want another face 90 degrees to that. So I'm just going to skim over the top of this one. So that's one good face. So I've just deburred that. Make sure we got no dirt lying around. So I'm just going to hang that out the side of the vise. Something like that. Okay, just nip it with my fingers. Let's just get the Allen key at the ready. And then, using a square, I'll bring the square in. Set that up square. Just tighten the vice off. And we'll skim over the top of here. So the second method. I need one of these. I haven't opened it yet. New toy. So method number two. Um, the angle plate is squared to the table this way. Uh, to the axis. The angle plate is set over at 15 degrees. Now I did run a clock over it when I set it at zero. And it was no more than a thou or so out. Um, by eye on the graduations. So I've tipped it to 15 degrees. Locked the table off first. Clock the table into straight in this direction, straight with the x-axis. Clamp the vise on there, got the vise squared up as well. And obviously now the bed of my vise is tipped at 15 degrees. So with the part down onto a parallel, parallel clamp in the part, um, I'm going to have to make myself some proper clamps, more clamps, um, to hold this vise onto the adjustable angle table or angle plate. Um, anyway, so that means that that part is now set at 15 degrees and it can be machined over the top. So, uh, yeah, setup number two. Just taken the end off this one and squared it up. With it being at such a narrow angle, 15 degrees, I didn't want a, <laughs> a stubby, pointy end on it. So, I think that's the last of the cleanup cuts. Gently, gently. Okay. So, basically a thou cut now. So, yes, another way of doing an angle. Um, not hugely accurate we're going to get better and better as we go along and of course I could have done the 45 degree this way as well but just showing different ways that we can do it so my third plan for an angle I've set the table to a0 um, four degrees per rev I've just set a0 on the table clamp the part on with an overhang on a parallel so that I can machine the uh, 22 and a half degree face, which is what I'm going to do on this one. And any random position, not worried about the center point of the table, anything like that. So, yeah, I'm basically clocking up this edge and I've been playing with it. And as you can see, pretty much got a zero. Look, I can come away. Yeah, hold on, let's come back. But anyway, along its length, it's pretty much clocked in. So, if I rotate the table 22 and a half degrees, I should be able to machine this space. So I'll bring the clock out of the way. Just get that somewhere safe. Undo the locks. Oh, that's that one. And that one. So, four turns of rev. Or four. Uh, degrees of rev, so that's 4, 
8, 12, 16. Another turn. 20 degrees. 21. 22. What did I say? 21 and a half. 22 and a half. What am I thinking? 22 degrees and 30 gives me 22 and a half degrees which is half of 45 so I just got to machine this now without rotating the table the tables all locked machine it back and forth in the y-axis and we should have 22 and a half degrees so my final method um, 30 degrees we're going to use a sign bar now this sign bar is five inches between rollers um, so basically with a sign bar you use sign <laughs> the name suggests uh, angle plate here which is squared up and locked to the table okay I've clocked this in and locked it down so five inches and I want 30 degrees now calculations for sign bars the sign of the angle you want multiplied by the length of the centers of the rollers so in this case five inches because I've been doing it for donkey's years, I know the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. So 0.5 times 5 inches is 2.5 inches. So I haven't got any slip, go uh, slip blocks. So what I've done is set up an adjustable parallel with a 1, 2, 3 block. I've mic'd the 1, 2, 3 block. It is 2 inches all while the shouting. I set up my adjustable parallel to half inch and I've mic'd across the two and as close as I can do with a mic it's two and a half inches so with a sign bar tucked up on top there there we are that angle will be 30 degrees from the bed um, you know this is the most accurate way I can do it without slip blocks I have just ordered myself a set of grade two slip blocks workshop grade slip blocks but better than no slip blocks at all right Okay, so I think my plan is, if I can just, should be able to just get a clamp on there. Just hold it down firm. Obviously I've cleaned everything off here, so there's no swarf or dirt or anything anyway. So yeah, that would need to go on there. As you can see, my saw angle is miles out. So if I put a clamp, how can I get this in there? Will it go in? There's ribs on the back of my... Uh, here we go. Yes, it will. <laughs> if I clamp the part there, firmly down against the side bar. Okay, that's well locked. Um, my side bar is going to get in the way of machining if I'm going to be machining across the top. So I'll just take this clamp off now. I'll take the sign bar out of the way and the stack of blocks and I should be able to maybe get another clamp on there yes I can bit of a fiddle but I can get two clamps on there I think we're a lot safer that way okie dokie can't get a tool makers clamp on here because the back of the angle plate has ribs on it okay so let's just yep yeah, I think we're secure enough there to machine across the top here yeah, my angle is uh, a country mile out but not to worry I'll just take it gently All right. and I'll bring that down until it cleans up Bearing in mind I'm only clamped on here with a pair of uh, G clamps. But it didn't go in anyway. I'm not uh, horsing material off here. Probably taking 10 cloud cuts. So I'm just roughing at the moment. I've been cutting this dry the whole time. Yeah, and that's just cleaned it up. So, very small cut. 
with the last pass. I'll speed the cutter up a bit. We'll put a bit of oil on it. Uh, we would, if we can find the oil. We'll be done with that. I tell you what, I'm uh, losing the pot. <laughs> right. Okay. Speed her up a bit. I was running out of about a thousand. I'm running what, thirteen hundred? Just slow down on the feed, up on the speed. Bit of oil. Just run a finishing path all the way across. But because the uh, sign bar method is probably the most accurate of the methods I've, well, it is the most accurate of the methods I've been uh, showing, I'm going to do all the other blocks in the same method so they know they're all fairly accurate. But the other ways I showed was just a demonstration how it, you can do it when you haven't got a sign bar or what have you. So if I wanted to do my 22 and a half degrees, um, I could turn calculator on, on the Diaro. I'll go 22.5, the sine of it, 0 0.38260. I'll multiply it by the length of the sine bar, times 5, equals, so my stack of blocks, if I had blocks, but my stack this time is going to be 1.913 and a half now we'll call it nine one three four two i've got a few machining marks in the edges but yeah slight so i'm just running them gently on both sides just to get rid of the machining marks off the flat edges Try to hold it perfectly at 90 degrees to the stone. I'm swapping directions. Ooh. I've run them on the coarse side of the stone first. There's just a few tiny little marks. I think we've just about got it, other than the fact it's covered in oil. We'll probably give them a buff up on a buffing wheel just to clean them up. And they're not done yet because there's nothing written on them. So we're going to have to sort that out. Well there we are, that's my series of blocks. I got a 15, a 22 and a half, a 30 and a 45 degree angle block. Well there we are, that's my entry sorted anyway for now, my four little gauges. Quite happy how they turned out. Anyway, uh, you will notice there's loads of them under the hashtag TMC2020, so check out some of the other videos guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we shall see you all very soon. Cheers now.